Okay, question number 14 asks us to solve a linear inequality. And what I'd like to do, I'm going to pause you for a moment with a real pretty picture. And as soon as I take away the picture, we'll be at my worksheet and we'll work the problem together. Okay, here we are. And what I'd like to do is to point out that in this problem, you know, if this were an equation, you would start this the same way we're going to start this inequality. We're going to distribute. So we have 14 minus 7x is greater than 6 plus 3x. And what we need to do now is we need to get the variables on one side and the constants on the other. Normally with equations, I don't care what side you get the variable on. A lot of times with inequalities, I prefer for students to get the variable on the left because then they tend to read the inequality correctly at the end when they're graphing. So, let's subtract 14 from both sides. And at the same time, let's subtract 3x. So what that's going to give me when I collect terms is I have a negative 10x is greater than, and here we have a negative 8. All right? Now, what you need to ask yourself at this point is what you need to do to get x alone. And in this particular problem, you can see that we're going to undo multiplication by division. So both sides of this inequality are going to need to be divided by negative 10. Dividing by a negative to keep it equivalent means you have to flip the sign. So each side divided by a negative caused the sign to change. Very important step. This gives me an x. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, which in this case is 8 tenths. And that further reduces to x is less than 4 fifths. Now, let's come over here to my blank part. One way to write the solution set would be the set of all x's such that x is less than 4 fifths. That's set builder notation. Another way to write the solution, or to express it rather, is graphically. I would find 4 fifths on my number line. I would put a paren on it because it's not equal, so it's not included, so it's paren. This is the number 4 fifths. And since x is less than it, I would shade to the left. And remember that this direction is actually the direction of negative infinity. This negative infinity is not, you're not required to put that on the number line at all. But I think it helps the next step a lot easier. When you go from the graphing to the interval notation, notice interval notation does what? It goes from negative infinity comma to four fifths. If you already have the negative infinity on your graph up here, it's a logical transition to put it there. And it's also logical to put it to the left of four fifths since it's to the left of four fifths on your graph. And remember, anytime you're using infinity or negative infinity, you will always put a paren, not a bracket. All right, thank you.